start lecture 16 and the course is corrosion protection methods and today's topics uh, will be a continuation of our discussion on materials aspects for corrosion protection. If we look back and then see previous lectures, you will see that uh, uh, we talked about uh, composition effect and we have taken reference in case of stainless steel. In fact, we have uh, seen that by changing composition, we can get several stainless steels. And when we talk about stainless steel, we mainly look at the passive layer. And that passive layer gives you the protection against pitting as well as crevice corrosion. And this pitting as well as crevice, they are uh, extremely localized corrosion mode. And there is a parameter, it is a kind of empirical parameter which suggests that what could be the level of protection uh, towards pitting as well as crevice in case of stainless steel. So, that particular empirical parameter name is brain. So, we are actually still in the section of composition effect on corrosion protection. So, we are looking at composition effect and in case of stainless steel, so we have an empirical parameter called brain. So, it can be expressed as per this percentage of chromium plus 3.3 times of percentage of molybdenum plus 16 times percentage of nitrogen plus 1.6 times 65 times percentage of tungsten. Now, this gives you an idea what could be the resistance towards pitting as well as crevice and its full form is pitting resistance equivalent number. And if uh, stainless steel has a sufficient pitting resistance, generally its crevice corrosion resistance is also very high. So, higher this plane, means higher pitting as well as crevice corrosion resistance and uh, that is why we add a little molybdenum as well as nitrogen or tungsten to get a very good pitting resistance. Of course, chromium is always there. So, this is about uh, the brain, but remember this particular brain uh, it gives you a kind of idea general idea, but there could be a possibility that higher brain may be having lower pitting resistance because there are other factors like uh, precipitation of manganese sulfide or precipitate free zones or chromium depleted zones those can be can be possible if we follow a faulty process or if we have inhomogeneous alloy those are the possibilities okay so, but it gives you a fairly good 
uh, idea about the stainless steels resistance uh, against pitting and corrosion, uh, pitting and crevice corrosion. Now, this is about uh, composition effect. Now, if we see that composition and microstructure as well as processing, at times we will see that it is very difficult to uh, distinguish the effect of each one of them separately. So, like one more factor that is that can contribute to corrosion protection is the ease of attainment of passivity. Okay. So, if we look at that particular part that uh, ease So, if we consider this in case of passivating metal of course, environment also comes into picture. So, there if a material alloying or the alloying is done in such a fashion that the material goes from active state to passive state quickly and then we will definitely have a very good corrosion resistance because once passivity achieves we have uh, corrosion in the passive zone which is uh, a very low corrosion uh, current density. Now, for that we have to also look at two aspects. One is composition, we can say that alloying effect plus change in microstructure. So, these two effects can be considered together. Now, the choice of alloying element will be decided since we are looking at the passivity will be decided on the basis of the element or the alloy what we are talking about. For example, in case of chromium or titanium, if we add little platinum or palladium, we can get spontaneous passivity. Okay. So, and also it happens when there is hydrogen ion reduction, but there are no oxidants present, strong oxidants. Oxidants are like oxygen, dissolved oxygen or some other strong oxidants like ferric uh, chloride or Fe plus 3. So, then this effect uh, might be different. So, in case of chromium or titanium, so, this particular combination of alloying as well as change in microstructure would come into picture. Now, we have to we have chosen these two elements because these two elements show active passive behavior. Now, depending on uh, where the cathodic polarization line cuts the active passive zone of that particular metal, we can get either active zone or we can achieve spontaneous passivity. In fact, we can also get unstable passivity also. We have seen before. So, what happens in case of active passive material? Let us say we have this diagram E versus log i here it is ampere per centimeter square let us say this is voltage. Now, this material shows active passive behavior. So, that means, this is my equilibrium potential for chromium. So, it goes like this then. So, this is a typical active passive uh, metal. So, this is my active zone this is equilibrium potential for the metal and this is my i this is my i 0 for that metal let us say titanium and uh, up till this zone this is anodic everything is anodic on top of this particular point. So, this is active 
and then beyond this point to this point this is passive and then beyond this point we have transpassive okay let me just put it in strong color in fact if this zone this particular zone there could be a possibility of a kind of a slant line this slant line is possible so then there could be one more zone so from here to there is basically a transition zone fine from active to passive now, where the polarization line for cathodic reaction cuts this anodic part, that would decide whether this material will show active behavior or spontaneous passive behavior. Now, if uh, the polarization line for some cathodic reaction, let us say this is my point. So, let us say this cuts this line here bypassing this particular point it bypasses this point. So, that case and this is my let us say hydrogen evolution reaction. Okay. We are talking about cathodic polarization and this particular part is titanium so here titanium is actually dissolving in the form of ti3 plus so we have uh, this is the point corresponds to i core and this is corresponds to E core okay. and the plot will be if we do polarization the plot will be like this and if we continue this polarization till this point, but if we keep continuing the polarization then plot will look like this like this. So, this this will show typically active passive. So, if we continue till the end of active zone that means till this active zone then we will get this okay. and then the material will corrode as per this I core what in the red color what has been shown. Now, this particular hydrogen polarization line hydrogen evolution line if it cuts across this if it cuts like this. Okay. So, this is my hydrogen line now. So, that time my polarization plot would be in this particular same diagram if we want to show it. So, it is cutting at this point there. So, so the schematically I can show that I think this one I can drag it little down okay, like this, but when it okay. so now when it cuts here. So, then plot will be in that passive zone it is cutting now. So, the plot will look like okay. so like this. So, that means this is spontaneous passivity and this is active. Now, if we see that if we convert this polarization behavior from active to active passive and then going to spontaneous. So, then definitely my corrosion rate will be much lower than in the active zone. So, here you could see 
that in this case my corrosion current density would be I cot and I can put it passive. So, this is much lower than I cot which is this one. So, then corrosion rate would reduce drastically. So, this can be done by introducing platinum or palladium in a small amount in titanium and chromium. And since we are considering only hydrogen reduction reaction, so this is applicable in case of acid solution. Now, what is done in case of titanium let us say we add little bit of platinum. Now, before we understand the behavior of that alloy, let us understand the mixed potential theory in case of connecting platinum with titanium fine. And we know that hydrogen evolution exchange current density I 0 hydrogen evolution on platinum surface is much higher than I 0 hydrogen evolution on titanium surface. And here if you consider this I 0, so this is my I 0 hydrogen evolution and this is basically on titanium surface. Now, when it happens like that, so you have you are going into the section of mixed potential theory. Initially, it will have its own anodic and cathodic part. this is my I 0 titanium uh, sorry this is easy e equilibrium and this is I 0 on titanium surface for titanium. This is the anodic part where titanium is dissolving. So, this is titanium minus 3 e equal to titanium 3 plus. Now, let us say on titanium surface on titanium surface uh, the hydrogen evolution reaction is like this. So, this is hydrogen minus H plus minus electron equal to H plus and this segment is So, this hydrogen evolution and this is E equilibrium for hydrogen and uh, this corresponding point is I 0 on titanium surface that is hydrogen evolution exchange current density and we know that I 0 is exchange current density E equilibrium is equilibrium potential and this is non corroding. To understand this I would request you to go back and check the earlier lecture series. So, correspondingly that whenever I am putting this uh, subscript titanium that means that exchange current density is on the titanium surface and one case it is titanium dissolution or titanium deposition on uh, titanium surface that time one exchange current density which is a non corroding condition. And similarly, when I am writing I 0 H plus slash H 2 that means we are considering hydrogen reaction on titanium surface. 
that the subscript uh, is basically the metal on which uh, hydrogen reaction is taking place or metal dissolution or deposition is taking place. So, that is the connotation here we are using identity. Now, when we are having only titanium no platinum. So, now we are having this is a titanium plate we are adding another platinum plate and connecting it this is titanium and platinum. So, this is galvanically connected and this is acid solution and no oxidant. Okay. So, that case since we know that this is the situation whenever we add titanium with platinum that would galvanically connect my equilibrium potential will not change. So, that means this will remain fixed because this is decided by the Nernst equation as well as pH of the medium. So, that would not change, but exchange current density on the platinum surface would change and it will progress to the right. So, it will go to this place. So, this is little higher up. So, this place it will go and it will have its own polarization. So, that means, so this is positive polarization and this is the negative one. Okay. So, this is hydrogen plus E equal to H 2 half H 2. So, this is basically I 0 hydrogen evolution reaction on platinum surface. and this is H plus sorry H minus E equal to H plus which is basically the anodic part for the hydrogen reaction. Since it is uh, mixed potential, so that means we have to add up this current, this current with this current density and this is in the current density axis log i. So, if we add it up, so it will go like this or oh, let me put a different color. So, red color. So, this is my combined cathodic polarization. It include two currents. on titanium plus on platinum. So, on platinum hydrogen evolution and on titanium uh, hydrogen evolution that two currents are added because this is coming from mixed potential theory. This is coming from mixed potential theory. Okay. So, now if we see that the junction point where this cathodic line is cutting the anodic portion of titanium is at this location, at this location. So, previously it was cutting here, now it is cutting as shown by green arrow. Now, the current density corresponding to the corrosion rate for the new situation which is the galvanically coupled titanium with titanium platinum. So, that current density is I can put I core with adding platinum which is in combination of platinum and this particular current density which is I core only with titanium. So, here platinum means basically it is a coupled log I. Okay. So, now if we do polarization then you will see the exactly similar plots here. In this case what we are doing we are changing the in this particular case we are changing the cathodic polarization kinetics. So, in case of brown line in this particular case this brown line is actually coming with a much shallower slope 
that means its kinetic is enhanced. But here kinetics of hydrogen reaction on both the plates titanium as well as platinum both are same because that slope is not changing. But what happened what is happening because here the exchange current density of hydrogen evolution on platinum is much higher than on titanium that is what we are moving from active zone to spontaneous passive. So, this would lead to spontaneous passivity and this is this particular segment this particular current is, it is active behavior active no passivity. So, that means if you leave titanium in high acid medium then it will dissolve at this rate at this rate okay. and if we have platinum connection then it will dissolve at this rate okay. and at the same time if you notice I core titanium platinum that couple is much less than I core on titanium. Okay. So, when there is no coupling and since this is in the log scale, so that difference would be few orders of magnitude and the polarization plot would be similar like this. So, in this case in one case we will get active behavior, another case we will get on the same plot if we try to plot it E versus log i the plot pattern would be okay. So, this is spontaneous passive and this is active. So, if we do not do any polarization study titanium will corrode as per this corrosion rate and if we leave it with the connection of platinum it will corrode at this rate this is this particular rate. Okay. So, there will be huge reduction in corrosion when we connect it to platinum. So, this same concept is taken up for alloying. Now, when we alloy little bit of platinum is alloyed in titanium this is the alloy. So, it is a homogeneous mixture in the beginning everywhere we have platinum homogeneously distributed in titanium in a solid solution. Now, once it is exposed to acid medium then one particular thing happens because platinum sits very high up in the reduction potential series compared to titanium. So, titanium is much below platinum in reduction potential series. So, platinum has got a higher reduction ability than titanium. So, once it is exposed to acid in the beginning platinum and titanium both will go in the solution in the form of ions, but since platinum ion has got a higher reduction ability. So, it will deposit back and on titanium there will be small small platinum pop ups. So, these are some platinum pop ups. Okay. Now, the similar mixed potential theory can be followed. So, what we have followed here. So, that means on platinum now hydrogen evolution would start because it is acid medium and the polarization light the mixed potential polarization line for the cathodic reaction will cut the titanium polarization line in the passive range and then immediately passivity will be achieved. In the beginning definitely the corrosion would be very fast for titanium because the path for the reaching to this passivity spontaneous passivity is this one. So, it goes like this okay. So, this is the path. So, that means initially it will have a fairly good amount of corrosion, but it will happen for a moment 
and then once it reaches to that particular passive point which is the point of spontaneous passivity and immediately we will see that, that the platinum dissolution rate will go down to a great extent. Now, this is I think this is a very smart way of allowing. So, in this case one should take care that there should not be any abrasion on this surface. So, on this surface if we have abrasion or let us say somebody rubs it off. Okay. So, then there could be an issue because all those platinum spots will be out and immediately it will get back to the situation what we had here. Okay. So, from here to this that situation can arise if we rub off that particular top surface. Interestingly this is actually a combination of microstructural modification in situ microstructural modification. So, initially it is homogeneous. fine and whole body is homogeneous at the same time surface is also homogeneous. So, both surface plus body. Now, in this case after because of this de-alloying effect, so this happens by, by de-alloying, de-alloying plus redeposition of platinum. Okay. So, uh, because of its higher reduction potential, so platinum ions will get reduced back on the surface of titanium and then we will get those titanium platinum spots on top of titanium surface. Now, here what we see the change, we see the change like it will be homogeneous in the bulk, but heterogeneous on surface. In fact, surface texture also different. So, we are changing surface microstructure plus physical texture. So, that means appearance of the surface. So, these two are changed. So, it is a combination this particular effect is combination of alloying plus surface change surface microstructural change. So, this is also possible in case of chromium, but remember we should not have any oxidant, but interestingly this alloying should be very carefully done in case the polarization plot is like this. Schematically, I am showing log i, this is E. If it is iron, then iron also has a kind of plot like this, plot like this. Okay. So, this is typical active passive behavior iron shows, but there initially iron on iron surface, this was my cutting point for hydrogen evolution reaction. So, this is again in acid in case of iron. So, there if we put platinum, this potential is basically between this point and this point. So, on platinum surface as we have seen from the mixed potential theory. So, this is on iron surface, hydrogen on iron surface, this is I 0 hydrogen on platinum surface of course, the mix, uh, exchange current density of hydrogen on platinum is much higher than the than that in case of iron. So, it will have its own mixed potential. So, this will be my corrosion rate nu corrosion rate for iron platinum couple and this is for only iron. Okay. We could see that I core, so this is my I core iron platinum, this is much lower than this. So, that means, if we alloy it here with platinum, we are going to increase the corrosion rate few orders of magnitude. 
So, that means we have to be very careful for doing such kind of alloying. Uh, first, we have to have a proper idea of its polarization behavior in that particular solution, right? And if the such situation arises, we must not do any noble metal alloying. In fact, they are also the same principle would work homogeneous initially, it will be homogeneous and then de alloying and de deposition of platinum because of platinum higher reduction potential of platinum ion compared to iron ion. Okay. So, iron will dissolve and then platinum will deposit back and similar situation can arise what we have seen in case of titanium. So, there it will be catastrophe because the corrosion rate would increase enormously. So, this alloying we have to also be careful and do it after doing a proper laboratory test and then finally, we should go ahead. So, this is about uh, uh, the, uh, the smart choice of alloying element at the same time what we are seeing, we are actually trying to get the material to a spontaneous passive zone and we should make such arrange such alloying so that the passivity achievement becomes very easy. So, that is what we have termed it as ease of achieving passivity. So, this is one such example for the, the effect of microstructure as well as composition. Okay. So, let me stop here, we will continue our discussion on the effect of metallurgy on the corrosion protection. Okay. So, till then thank you.